uh, one of the premier, or I should say the premier, uh, Old Testament text that is quoted more often than any others. You know this text from Genesis 15, 6. Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. This text is cited three times in what we call the fourth chapter of Romans. Cited once in Galatians 3. It's cited again in Hebrews 10, I think it is. Uh, more often than any other, the second most often cited text is Habakkuk 2.4. That text is also cited a couple times in Romans. This one, though, this premier text uh, that the apostles appeal to again and again and again, it, 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 it is the cornerstone as far as Scripture, things that have been revealed from the past. It is the cornerstone of their doctrine, if you will, uh, from a scriptural perspective. They look to it again and again to assure the believers, to reveal to them how God has worked in the past and what counts with heaven. The King James uses the word counted. God counted it to him as righteousness. Uh, my translation says credited to him. We're in the midst of an economic, uh, some call it economic meltdown and so forth, and people are counting this and crediting this and debiting that and so forth. And so this is prominent in the minds of everyone right now. We know that, that uh, human crediting and accounting systems, uh, reckoning systems, uh, do not work because the human heart is corrupted. God's accounting system, of course, is not like the accounting systems of men. Uh, God values different things. He looks for different things. He counts different things. And the things, of course, that heaven counts are not misappropriated nor misapplied. Uh, they are not used uh, in a corrupt fashion uh, for personal gain, although God does gain from them. Uh, he is a giver, and so he shares the profit, genuinely shares the profit. He wants to do that, intends to do that all along. And the, the staggering thing is <laughs> that as God gives, there's more and more and more. This is the nature. It doesn't take anything away. So this text I want to read here. Uh, this is the conclusion of the Apostle Paul's reasoning here in what we call Romans chapter 4, verses 22 through 25. Therefore, it was also credited to him as righteousness. Now, he's been talking about our forefather Abraham and him hoping against hope and believing God and uh, uh, not counting uh, uh, his age or Sarah's age, but counting God's promise and power working in them. And so he was not weak in faith, uh, though he was as good as dead. But with respect to the promise of God, he did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith. Therefore, it was also credited to him as righteousness. And now, not for his sake only was it written that it was credited or reckoned to him, but for our sake also, to whom it will be credited, as those who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, he who was delivered over because of our transgressions and was raised because of our justification. Brethren, I want to, you to recall this morning that heaven counts our faith as a credit. Heaven reckons it, reckons it to our credit and to God's credit as well. Heaven is honored. Heaven esteems those who believe him. Remember the Savior said there in his prayer in John 17 that he wanted those who believed in him to be with him. He, he valued and treasured them. He would promised them that, that they would have these good things from the Father because they believed in him. And, uh, of course, heaven knows the power of faith. He's put that power within us. Uh, the power of faith both uh, urges us forward and draws us forward. It undergirds us from behind the things that have been promised in the past. It supports us presently in God's promises. And those promises also draw us forward to, the fu to their fullness because we don't have their fullness here. But we have the credit. <laughs> we have God's reckoning. And, brethren, we know when God reckons something to someone, it counts. It counts. It will not be lost. No uh, corrupt individual will siphon it off and, and be able to juggle the books in some way to where somewhere down the line we find out, whoops, <laughs> there's something missing here. No, there's nothing going to be missing in the books of heaven. A record is made in his presence, Malachi said. Yes, amen. Daniel saw that the books were open, and the things, the names were written there. They were there. 
They were kept there. They were sure and certain. John also saw that from Revelation. So we're talking about here heaven's accounting system. <laughs> and it is not manipulated. There, there's no one in the system anywhere that is seeking anything for themselves. But they are all accruing credit to God. And then, of course, he, he is generous <laughs> to give and to share that blessing. It's his nature. This is what he's like. This is what he wants to do. He wants many sons in glory to share in the things that he has for himself, to share in himself. And he wants to share in them as well. Amen. So this is what God is doing, uh, increasing, if you will, the interest, <laughs> increasing our interest, isn't he? It's our interest. He's increasing our interest in him. <laughs> and his interest in us is increasing as our interest in him increases. <laughs> It all makes perfect sense. It's all just as reasonable as could be. And for us, for us, see, the cornerstone of this is our own Savior, whose glory we have seen, who was made like us and who walked among us, who shared in our beings here, in our, in our own selves here, tasting of the things that we taste of here, the trouble and the suffering, the testing, the trying, he shared in all of that. But he was faithful. And it was credited to him as righteousness as well, from, from a human perspective. <laughs> See, this was credited to him as he endured the suffering, despised the shame for the joy that was set before him, that, that reckoning of God. That God would reckon these things to him. Isn't this what the prophet Isaiah talked about there? Isaiah 53. God saw the suffering of his soul and was satisfied. This is God's reckoning, see. So uh, I want to encourage you and assure you of the value of your faith. Heaven recognizes it, highly esteems it, highly values it. Our being here together, our giving our attention to him and the things that he has made known. Uh, these things are not lost. <laughs> they're, not, they're not just of ourselves. This is not... This is not a cultural issue here, our meeting together and speaking about these things. They're not just from us, just something that we have generated of ourselves. Not so. God has revealed these things, and we have believed him, and he credits that faith, reckons that faith as righteousness in his sight. So even so, brethren, continue in your good faith. Sister Anita, come and lead us.